Hi everyone, my name's Stephen. Welcome to D&G STEM TV. Let's do some science. Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. Ah. <laughs> Dumfries and Galloway is a gorgeous part of the country, filled with spots of beauty and history, but it might surprise you to find out that this idyllic landscape has more than a few connections to space. The final frontier, where the great minds of our planet turn their attention to try and solve the mysteries of life, the universe, and everything. But that begs the question, what exactly is space? Various cultures in human history have known it as the heavens where gods resided watching down over us, but now we can prove it is tangible. It is something we can travel through. So what is it made of then? And perhaps more importantly, how was it formed? Let's say this is space, a vast expanse of almost nothing, peppered with gas and dust. Over time, these gather together to form planets like our Earth, or stars like the Sun. And what causes these to draw together is gravity. Gravity is a force that acts on everything that has mass, from a kilogram of sugar to me and you. And it affects everything around that thing by pulling it closer. Now when it comes to you and I, well, we don't have much mass compared to, say, a planet, so our gravitational force is tiny. But the planet Earth is so big and heavy that the force keeps us all stuck on the planet. And the sun is so massive that it keeps the planet Earth in orbit around it. And the sun itself is pulled into orbit by gravity around the center of our galaxy. That's how large these forces can get. Gravity even exerts a force on light, which might seem confusing because, well, does light have mass? What even is light made of? The answer to that is not simple, but it is very exciting. And it all starts with one of Dumfries and Galloway's own, a certain James Clerk Maxwell. Our pal James grew up and lived here, in Glen Lair for most of his life. He was a child genius, writing scientific papers at the age of 14, and making major discoveries in science that affect our world in huge ways today. He calculated that the rings around Saturn were made of individual particles and not a solid or liquid mass as was believed at the time. This was shown to be true by photos taken by NASA space probes well over a hundred years later. This was a bit of a theme for James, coming up with ideas ahead of his time. It was James who first proved that light is a wave of electricity and magnetism, and that other waves like that must also exist. These were discovered later by scientists who went looking for them because of James's work. They include radio waves, x-rays, even what we now call Wi-Fi, mobile phone, and satellite signals. Now, satellite is a word that gets bandied about quite a lot, but what does it actually mean? Well, let's find out. If you want to try this experiment at home, you'll need a bag of rice or something similarly heavy, attached to a bit of rope or a dog lead like I'm using. You need to make sure you're holding that tightly in a wide open space and then you can start spinning around and believe me when I say you will get very dizzy so do be careful. Now the bag has gone into what's called a circular orbit around me 
And breaking down the forces at play, what's going on is I am exerting a force pulling the bag towards me, holding it at the same distance relative to me so that it doesn't fly off into the distance. And I'm also exerting the force that is pushing the bag at a right angle to me, and that's what keeps it moving around. These two forces basically balance each other out, so the circular motion we're seeing is achieved. Now this is a very simplified version of what happens on a much larger scale between the Earth and the Moon, which is an orbit around the planet just like this bag is in orbit around me, making it a satellite of the planet. In fact, a natural satellite, as opposed to an artificial satellite or a man-made satellite like the ones we use to bounce signals around the Earth and communicate with each other. How these satellites got where they are and what keeps them in motion is very different. But what holds them in place in orbit is the exact same. Our old friend, gravity. So how do we get from the Earth to in orbit in order to launch our satellites? We need something that can break free of the Earth's atmosphere. We need a rocket. We're going to find out just how big a rocket we can build using supplies you can find in your house or at the supermarket. Like this little contraption here called a stomp rocket. It's very easy to set up. Everything comes in the box. You put it together quickly and then all you need to do is stomp. Oh my. It's quite impressive. <laughs> Let's have a look at that again in slow motion. Amazing. How high does it go? Oh, look at that! So what's going on when we, uh, when we have a go at this? We know that this guy is filled only with air, right? But why, when we've hit it, is this being thrown up into the air? That's the question. Let's listen closely to this slow motion footage. So you heard that impact there, but the rocket hasn't moved. That's because that was me hitting the purple launch pad. But the rocket itself doesn't move until there. So based on that observation, we must know that it's the air being pushed through the tube that is then forcing the rocket upwards. So that was pretty cool, but all it really used was some compressed air. This time round, we're going to build a rocket ourselves using actual rocket fuel. This is our rocket. And this is our rocket fuel. So as well as vitamin C effervescent tablets, what we need is a bottle, a plastic bottle, a sports cap for that bottle and hot water. And that's it. And all you need to do is, as I'm doing, is pop the vitamin C and the hot water into the bottle, then pop the cap on as quickly as you can, flip it over and put it into a mug or a cup in order to hold it steady. And then you better run because you're making a rocket. This is where it gets serious, guys. Everything's ready. It's time to run for it and see what happens. Here we go. Oh, well that wasn't what we were looking for, but that's all right. It's a science experiment after all. Surely next time we'll get it right. Or maybe next time. Uh, well, maybe, uh, okay, that already, nope, uh, that didn't work either. Here we go. Ah, uh, almost, almost. It's important to try everything to see what works, including gravity. So we're back again, it's the next day, and today I have brought a slightly smaller bottle. And the hope is that this guy will work for us where the others haven't. Once again, we're getting set up with our new bottle our hot water and our tablet. Yesterday we had the best luck using three tablets, half filling the bottle with water, and that seemed to build up the most pressure and get the most uh, of an effect. So we're trying that again, and hopefully we'll see if it works. 
Oh! <laughs> yes! That. <laughs> That's what we're looking for. Okay, it didn't go very vertical, but I'm I'm taking that as a rocket. Did you see that go? Just in case you didn't, let's watch that again in slow motion. That's a success, but let's see if we can replicate it and do it again. Hey! I'm going to go ahead and call that a resounding success. And if you want to build on my work and try and get the bottle higher or further, there's links below this video to booklets you can use for just that. So uh, we're just doing a few more just to um, use up the last of our tablets and to see if we can get any cool shots like this one. Let's talk a little bit about um, failure. Failure happens a lot. It's happened to me a few times today and yesterday. It happened a lot yesterday. But through yesterday's failure has come today's success. And I think that's a really cool thing. I think it's amazing that we as people are able to learn from our mistakes and, and get better the next day with a little bit of thought and a little bit of preparation. It's a really powerful thing that we're able to do. And if I can do it, you can too, my friends. You absolutely can. Okay, so this is likely going to be our final experiment. Let's see if it works. Well, we got our cool shot and got our camera completely covered in sticky orange gloop. Let's head back to the studio, clean up, and chat a little about the science behind these experiments. Both those rockets worked slightly differently, but they operated on the same principle. The pressure of the gas inside the bottle or the rocket was greater than the pressure outside. And that meant that the gas was forced downwards through the nozzle at the bottom, and that pushes the gas down, but in turn pushes the bottle or the rocket up. And that's all there is to it. That's the same principle that applies to the massive rockets used by the UK Space Agency, used by NASA, used all over the world to launch rockets all the way up through the atmosphere into space. In fact, in 2021, we might see rockets and satellites launched on the Isle of Unst at the soon to be built Shetland Space Centre. Well, that's all from us today. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode and you found it entertaining. Let us know if you've tried out any of these experiments yourselves, send some videos if you like, and we'll see you again soon. Bye now.